Ryan and Josh here again with you for another uh, Fiat USA hangout with Band Free winner Nomad, aka North of Mesa Dixon. So, welcome guys. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having us. How are you doing? Uh, uh, just real quick, want to give uh, the viewers at home a little bit of background on uh, the, the Band Free contest that we ran. Tons of bands entered, tons of artists entered uh, through Reverb Nation. Um, all independent musicians uh, for their chance for a, a big, their big break, which is uh, an appearance on VH1. Um, you know, we, we are here with one of those uh, bands that entered and uh, won. They won the country genre uh, portion of it. So again, congratulations to you guys. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. And, and you know, we appreciate you guys coming out. If you know, for for the viewers we have watching right now, if you guys want to go through and do just sort of, sort of a quick introduction of who's here from the band and uh, who might be missing. I know you guys are a six-person band normally, right? Yeah, um, so yeah, let's go through. You guys take away. Do a little intro. I'm Bobby. I'm the uh, drummer. I'm Luke. I play fiddle and mandolin. I'm Dave, lead vocalist. I'm George, bass player. And I'm Jay. I, I play the guitar. And we're missing uh, suitcase Johnny Walklow. Very cool. And uh, I do believe we just uh, dropped Nomad, um, but they're coming back. There we are. Mm -hmm. There we go. We <laughs> can't predict uh, any te technical difficulties during this thing. And, uh, you know, the weather, weather is, of course, a little crazy out there, so uh, yeah. all across the globe, and, and especially in the U.S. So uh, yeah. if anybody does drop that joins us, uh, just go into your email, click the link uh, to join again, okay? So, so feel free to come on back if we lose you. Um, but besides all that, we got to get to the questions, right? That's why we're here. Uh, so we got to get uh, behind the scenes with Nomad. And uh, I guess the first question uh, to ask you guys is, you know, how do a, bu a bunch of dudes from uh, you know the Pittsburgh area uh, decide to come together and start a country band? Who wants to take it? You take <laughs> it. You take it. I'll take it. Um, it. It was a culmination of a number of things, and, and one of them primarily was. We were we've we've a lot of us have played together for a good while over the years, and we've we've traversed a number of genres, and we were at a point where we were writing tunes that we weren't positive where they fit in terms of rock, in terms of country, etc. And a producer we were working with at that time essentially said, "You're writing country songs, and you don't, <laughs> you don't even realize it." Yeah. And it, it hit us like a brick wall. And none of us were we could say huge country fans at the time, but like we we had like you know, smatterings of it here and there throughout our lives. And we kind of took a head dive, um, a head first dive into the new country thing, I don't know, 15 years ago, something like that. And we realized that the, he was correct. That's where we were headed. So that's kind of where things started. That's cool. That's cool. And so when you guys started out, I, I know you guys started touring. You started uh, traveling to Nashville um, for some of your performances. But, you know, like Ryan mentioned, you guys, your hometown is, you know, right outside of Pittsburgh. You guys aren't really from the South, so, I mean, was there trouble getting people to take you seriously as a country band? I mean, what, what kind of obstacles did you run into? I don't think anybody had any trouble taking us seriously. I mean, it, it, the, the songs that we write are good, and the, and the cover tunes that we pick, get, you know, coming out of the gate when we first started were right in that genre. Plus, we are from the Southwest. I mean, Pittsburgh's in Southwest Pennsylvania. So, I mean, we're you know, from the South. So, I mean, there you go. That That's a good it. rebuttal for anyone questioning your uh, your authenticity. Well, you guys are authentic, right? I mean, you guys have opened up for some pretty big uh, acts, right? I know uh, Toby Keith, Big and Rich, the Rascal Flats are all sort of uh, uh, part of those lineups that you guys have been able to uh, to support. Um, have have those acts helped influence you guys? I mean, you know, big names, big talent. Obviously, that's got to be good for you guys. Yeah, I think more so, like, from a live perspective. Like, we got to work with them and see what they do. And, and like, we're very, for that, the, the thing we pride ourselves on the most is probably our live show and the energy of it and stuff. And we all, we're always trying to take more from other folks, too, as to what they do and how we can kind of up our level. And, and you, we meet some, some people, uh, normally not, like, the, the main singer or anybody, but we're, we befriend a lot of the people in their bands and everything, and we stay in touch with each other. And we have... Did we freeze out? Again? Looks like we lost. Uh -oh. 
Nomad once again. Uh, <laughs> oh, please. Back. Yeah, we're back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're, good, we're good at this quick rejoining thing. We, we've got it <laughs> now. Yeah, it's not. I don't even think it's a connectivity thing. It's just like it loses the the join, and then we just rejoin. But we're good. Cool. cool. No, we'll, we'll just keep it going like this. I think it's been pretty smooth so yeah, far. No problem. So, All right. Uh, let's just jump right into the next question. Yeah. So you know, kind of switching gears a little bit. Um, this question, maybe Jay, if you want to field this one. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, songwriting. What's the process like for you guys? Um, you know, who who comes up with the initial riffs? Is it a collaborative effort? You know, what what is what goes into kind of putting together uh, Nomad uh, uh, music? Well, I think more it's the lyrics first, and then we have to build the song around it. And it's like a lot of trial and error. Uh, we may actually start the song off as slower, but as he like revamps the tempo uh, of the lyrics, things change. So you know, it's basically just like that. Just like a lot of a lot of trial and error with it. Everybody brings their own ideas. Yeah. And, mm. When you add something to the mix, it may make make something else sound okay. It doesn't fit right, so we have to re like adjust that. So uh, you know, it's it just takes uh, takes time to do it. Yeah, for sure. Well, and it's definitely a collaborative effort. It sounds like with you sure. guys, one person just leading the charge. You're all sort of. Uh, doing your part, right? I mean, that's what right. it's Absolutely. And, yeah. and the thing uh, um, that kind of, I think, stuck out to us is the prominence of the fiddle. Um, you know, I think it's it's certainly something that ties you to a traditional country sound, um, but, you know, I, I think it also makes you guys very unique uh, in terms of, of pop country. And so I just wanted you to maybe, obviously, Luke, you're here, so... Lou's uh, like, yes, the fiddle. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm being recognized right now. Me, me. <laughs> Just give us a little, uh, you know, kind of background on how you guys decided, you know, like you said before, you didn't start playing country. So when did that come into play? Oh, geez. I, I think, well, for, for all of us, we're all pretty much rock guys. Give them a second. Uh, yeah. It looks, and they're back. Yeah, yeah there we go. I think it's me every time I every say time, something. Yeah, every time you ask, you ask <laughs> um, our, all of us are pretty much rock guys, and you can you can tell by the, like the newer sound of country. That's just kind of the way it went. Like most of, most of the '80s rock songs sound like country today, and uh, I don't know. With us, it's it's like listening to Bon Jovi or Journey or something with a fiddle added to it is the way I always explain us. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably a bad analogy, but that's the way I look at it. And you're well, no, actually, that's a good lead into to sort of our next question, which was you guys definitely have a, a, a traditional um, country sound to you, but that's not your only uh, quality, right? You guys do pull from a lot of different genres. You guys do you know, uh, sort of Bon Jovi with the fiddle, right? You, you've well, got all the dance. Yeah, and, and so you've got one foot in traditional, but you've got your other feet, all of you guys, in, into all these different genres. So I guess maybe what's one of those that would maybe surprise us or, or one of the other um, artists that have influenced your your music? Well, I, I think I think when we first started out as a, as a band, we, we kind of gravitated toward the, the guys that were doing the, the kind of a, of a cross between rock and country. I mean, I think... Keith Urban is probably one of the, the best songwriters and, and best performers as far as kind of if you had to compare us to somebody, I always I always say that, you know, we're kinda of like a Rascal Flats and a Keith Urban mashed together with Kiss or Bon Jovi or, or classic rock or something like that. Um, you know you know, some of us grew up, you know, in the in the eighties and the seventies and you know, listening to music back then. I mean, you had bands like Kansas and John Cougar and, you know, just coming up through all those different types of genres where, you know, there was fiddle in, in, in a lot of that music or violin, depending on how you want to, how you want to term it. Um, so it wasn't like it was something that was always completely foreign to us. I mean, you know, it was, you know, it's obviously a part of a traditional country, but it was also part of, you know, a lot of traditional rock too. So yeah. it wasn't completely foreign to what we, what we wanted to do. And I think what you were looking for there was Kiss. That was the shock Kiss. factor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've well, actually considered. We've actually considered since there's six of us, um, is dressing up as all six members of Kiss that had makeup. There were actually six. So we were going to go out and do that maybe one Halloween and 
<laughs> see how that goes. <laughs> Play a whole kiss. Just uh, 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 sat down and blown everybody away. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss with cowboy hats, maybe. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, so, you know, kind of piggybacking a little bit off of that question, you guys recently released an EP that is basically an acoustic EP. Yeah. So we're referencing Bon Jovi, we're referencing Kiss. You know, certainly those bands have written some sentimental songs as well, but, you know, there is a sentimental side to some of your music. You know, American Boy, for example, you know, certainly has, like, a nostalgic, sentimental feel, but then there's other tracks that are super upbeat, and rocking, so, you know, considering all that, now you've got this acoustic EP, first, you know, what kind of made you guys decide to do that, and maybe a follow-up question is, you know, is it important to show that side of the band? We're going to turn this one to George. Oh, well, we, uh, about a, I guess, what's it been, about a year and a half since we did the acoustic American Boy? Mm -hmm. We did a, uh, an acoustic version of uh, American Boy, uh, from from the previous studio album, and it turned out so well that we decided to do an EP uh, of of some other tunes as well. Plus, we uh, did one cover and and one new original on that EP, and um, it was just uh, it was just I thought it was a great idea to take a lot of the tunes that we had and uh, turn them around a little, change the feel a little bit because of the instrumentation, and um, I I was really thrilled with. Uh, how it turned out. So kind of, again, kind of going with that question, you know, you turn on the radio, a lot of, you know, country or, I mean, any type of music, super produced, super slick, you know, but at the same time, people are starting to appreciate music again that seems a little bit less produced. You know, you have a band like Mumford & Sons who are very right. you know, acoustic-based. It's, so, it's got that almost raw sound to it. Exactly. Right? So... Yeah. I feel like there is this, you know, uh, market of people who are kind of craving that sound a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I think so, and, and I think like for us, I mean, we're a band that we've we've also been told that we're a little all over the place. But uh, you know, we're not signed to a major label, and we're not, you know, there's nobody pulling our strings but us. So you know, we we tend to do what we what we want to do. Um, which it's it's nice to kind of have that freedom and and with, what George was talking about too on the last on the acoustic CD what we noticed is you know it was done a little bit differently than the 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 CD previously where you're in a studio environment where a lot of times not everything is getting done together the drums and bass and a rhythm guitar will go down first and then you'll bring in you know a lead guitar or the you know the fiddle overdubs and then the vocals and that sort of thing which is generally how music is made. Um, with the acoustic CD, it was all of us playing all the time, um, and there were very few punch-ins and overdubs and things like that. And what we realized when we listened back to it that um, it really had a cohesive band sound. And, and again, we've been through a couple members. Uh, George and Jay are the newest members of the band um, who've now been with us for two years, and that was the first time that we got to play together as this unit in the studio, right. and we were just really, really impressed by the results. I mean, not so much from us, but just the way it sounded cohesively, so we, we really can't wait to start working on some, some more um, original material and get back in the studio and do that. Very cool. No, that's cool, and like you said, right, I mean, you got the whole band together in the studio, you get more of that, that energy that you'd almost get on the stage. Absolutely. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, sitting in your own room and, and doing your own thing in the studio and then just putting it all together. So I think that's part of why you hear that sort of emotion um, on the album as well. It's mm -hmm. cool. And I think we would be silly to not, and we have more questions for you guys, but it seems almost too good to, to pass up the opportunity to hear you guys play something. Mm -hmm. So let's just yeah. Yeah. That out. Yeah, let's go right into it. Let's, we know you guys have a song prepared, so mm -hmm. let's do it. Yeah, tell us maybe before you start real quick. A little bit about the song, what it's called, anything you want to let your fans know. Well, the, the couple things is the, the one person we mentioned that's in absentia is Suitcase Johnny, and he actually wrote the tune we're going to do for you. It's called Hold On Tight. Was that Spanish? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> triple words. But uh, it, 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 it's, on, it's in its full production version on our self-titled, and it's on the, the newest acoustic EP as well. And it's, it's reworked you know, differently enough where I think it has a nice little twist to it. Um, but it's kind of more of one of our mellow, a little more mellow, laid back, mid-tempo kind of thing. So, do it for you now. All right. Yeah, go ahead. 
I did. Oh, you did? I yeah. didn't <laughs> it's called Hold On Tight Again. <laughs> One, two, three, four. who have joined our hangout. I know that uh, Natalie has a question for you guys. So Natalie, if you want to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. The stage is yours. Please do. Natalie, hi. Hi, I'm sorry. My mute button was acting up. That's okay. My question for you is, what do you hope your fans to take away from your music? I want people to have a good time. Yeah, I, I want to have a good it. time when I play, you know. Enjoy it. I mean, I, I agree with that 100%. I'd maybe say one level deeper. I just, I just Like with me, I'm always like digging apart lyrics and trying to figure out what people mean. So hopefully they can pull something that relates to them from it more than anything. Yeah, and, you know, I think it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. You guys have these sort of two sides to the band. So I think it's cool that people can latch on to one, the other, or both, you know. Right, so that, right. Just diversity, which is great. Yeah, for sure. Thank uh, you. If anybody else has a question, unmute yourself. Feel free to ask. You can interrupt us. It's totally okay. Yeah, steal, steal the stage from <laughs> us, by all means, if you have any questions. Um, but I guess we'll move on with a couple more. Sure. Uh, sort, of, sort of piggybacking off of what Natalie just said, and actually your response to it about you know meaning, 
right? Uh, the meaning of no matter or north of Mason Dixon, right? What uh, what's the story behind that? Uh, you know, why why that name? When we were when we were originally putting this all together and talking about things, I mean, you know, I, I think it we, we just wanted to make kind of a, a, a non-confrontational statement saying that we're really proud of the fact that you know there there is some really good country music and things that exist north of the Mason Dixon line, which happens to be where we are. So the the, the name started out as the full name north of Mason Dixon, and we kind of added the uh, anagram. What, what's it called? I think it's called an anagram. The, the anagram later to, to uh, go along with it. So. Well, oh, sorry. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. I thought I was saying. No. <laughs> so. And, you know, speaking of that, like, so are there any bands that you're, you're friends with, any peers that are bands that people should start looking for that are north of that Mason Dixon making country music that people are, are digging and, and uh, that you guys are digging? Some fellow band shout-outs. Well, that, that's Shania Twain girl. She's from Canada, I think. Uh, yeah. She has, <laughs> she has a, I think she's her. got something going on. <laughs> South of Mason Dixon, I guess Keith Urban is uh, Australian, right? Yeah, he's, right, so, right. yeah, so he's, yeah. Do you mean, like, other local folks that we yeah, play? Yeah, sure. um, who are you well, there's certainly Hillbilly Way that it, we yeah. go back a good way with. Terry, um, Terry Lee Spencer? Terry Lee Spencer. Um... Saddle up, saddle up. Yeah, um, you the, know we have some rock, some close rock friends. Love, yeah, Betty. love Betty. I mean, there's just some, there's some good stuff in the yeah. area. We kind of get, we kind of get wrapped up in what we do, and it, and it, it involves a lot of time. Uh, so you know, it's, it's hard for us to really get out in, in, in support. You know, really to get out and see other bands because a lot of time we're traveling or we're gigging at the same, we're time. gigging at the same time. <laughs> so you know. Um, we, you know, we, we certainly, you know, want everybody, you know, right where they say a rising tide lifts all boats. We want, you know, we want a, a big music scene in the region. Yeah. We want everybody to be working. Um, you know, it's it does present some challenges with the way the economy's been and everything. But we want, we really, you know, we 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 love is if everybody's succeeding, then everybody's succeeding, and that's a good thing. So you know, we, yeah. we, that's the way we feel about it anyway. So when's uh, so when? speaking of your speaking of your travels, you know. Uh, what what is next for you guys? What's what's next on the docket? Are you guys hitting the road? Are you putting anything else out? Give us a scoop. Long time we're next. Doesn't matter. Um, we, good. We uh, are we usually by design. The last couple of years, our winners slow down so we can write um, because there was a period of time between our first release and our second, which was way too long of a span that we just got nothing done. So like. We're, we're in the middle of our law right now. We've had shows scattered throughout January and February. March, things start to kick into our, our warm season. Once we get into, like, warmer weather season, we're we're booked up probably through September, September October, mm -hmm. um, and then it, it kind of smatters off again back into the winter. Um, but we're, we already, we've already we been writing. Like, we've been pretty creative lately where um, we, we have a ton of ideas and a ton of, like, pieces of songs, and we're trying to... Get we we'd really love to get a full release out by the end of this year, which would be unheard of for us. So yeah. we really want, we really want to try that. Cool, very cool. Well, I you know unless anybody else has a, a question for you guys, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up by first of course saying thank you. Yeah, thank you guys very thank much. You. Thank you, thank, thank you, you guys. We owe you the thanks. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and congratulations too on you know taking the lead in the uh, the country genre. Oh, thank right. you so thank you. much. We appreciate thank it. Thank you for thank you for playing. Uh, not easy to do all the time, so thanks for, for putting on a, an awesome performance. Um, and we just want to let you guys know we appreciate it. So thank you very much. And thanks to everybody at, at home who's joined us as well. Um, yeah, thanks to the fans. Yeah, thanks, thanks guys. to the fans. Guys for yeah, thank you guys. You rock. And uh, you know, just to let everybody know, uh, we, we were doing one more of these one uh, with our, uh, I believe, alternative winner, which is a band called Substandard Radio. Um, we're going to be doing another Hangout on February 28th. Uh, so if you guys want to find out more information about that, um, please check out fiatbackstage.com, um, and you'll get all the information. And, you know, of course, last but not least, we want you guys to check out uh, Nomad or North of Mason Dixon on the Internet, so facebook.com slash north of Mason Dixon, um, or on Twitter at Nomad Country. Um, and then, of course, you guys have a website. You want to give that a plug? It, it's the full name, northofmasondixon.com as well. Very cool. 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 So we're going to hit here a little bit of showtime uh, to kind of lead us out. And, again, thank you guys very much, um, and we appreciate you joining us. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you. Hey, keep in touch. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. You guys too. Have a All good right. one, guys. Take care. See you.